Well, that was huge. It's Charlie here, and I've literally just finished recording the episode with Mikel Dia, the one you're about to listen to. Now, the episode is the keys to scaling an agency, and Mikel just gives away so much value and examples and analogies, which I feel like are just so powerful for agency owners. Now, in this episode, we talk about, you know, Mikel's story a little bit and what he's doing now with an amazing software company called Funnelytics, which he is the founder of and core creator. We talk about how the landscape of being an agency owner has really changed in the last few years. So if you're still operating like you were a few years ago, it's definitely time to change things up. The landscape has changed. And then the bulk of the episode, the important part is that Mikel really gives away what the keys are to scaling and what's important to focus on as an agency owner today. And at the end, he talks a little bit more about why we believe Google and YouTube YouTube are definitely the up and comers. So if you do enjoy this episode of the podcast, please make sure to subscribe and share. But let's get into this one. That's enough from me. And we are live for episode four of Agency Valley. And today I am very, very fortunate to someone I call a friend, but also an absolute machine in the agency world, Mikel Dia. How are you doing, Mikel? I'm great, buddy. How are you? I'm doing really well. Now, Mikel is the founder and creator of something very, very awesome called Funnelytics, which is a funnel mapping software, which I think is probably very, very useful for agencies and marketers in general. But I'm going to like, being this is the Agency Valley podcast, I'm going to say it's more useful for agency owners uh, and advice. (laughs) Yeah, it's true. It's very useful for both agency owners and marketers in general. But yes, uh, definitely for people who sell marketing services. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Funnelytics and how it helps agency owner and even a little bit about yourself? Yeah, no problem. So um, in short, I'll I'll give you kind of a brief background story. So um, I actually used to run a Mandarin language school. Very randomly enough, I have never ever been to China. I don't speak Mandarin at all, but I was living in London in the UK and I was obsessed with this idea of making money online, like selling stuff online. And I was super obsessed about, I I just dove into learning everything related to marketing and funnels and anything to try and convert a random stranger into an actual customer. And I came across this concept or this idea of a marketing funnel, right? What are the pieces, the pages, the ads, the emails? What are all of the pieces that you need to put in place to convert a random person who's never heard of you or your business before? And what are the steps they need to go through in order for them to actually become a customer uh, or a lead or whatever for your business, right? And as I started learning the psychology and, and the nuances of these marketing funnels, I got really excited and I got this opportunity to start a Mandarin language school. Uh, again, randomly enough. But when I started this school, my entire focus was, okay, how do we get random people who are looking for Mandarin lessons to choose us over every single type of school there is? What is the funnel? What is the process that we take them through in order for them to book lessons with us? So I started building out all of my Google campaigns, my ads, my pages, and this was the first funnel I ever built and it worked. Like it, I was so shocked and surprised that it actually worked after all of the years of failure beforehand, trying to, you know, build online businesses. This time it actually really worked and and started making us money. We grew really, really quickly. We exited that business uh, in about eight months for multiple six figures, which was like mind blowing to me. And It wasn't even the money that was exciting. It was the fact that I kind of figured out how to target these strangers and turn them into customers in a a niche, in a market that I knew nothing about. So I started consulting and, and helping various businesses, mostly for free, on how to set up these marketing funnels. And the cool thing was they all got awesome results. They all were getting incredible results for their business. So I decided I was going to start a, an agency, a marketing agency around this 
idea of funnels. And what I would do is provide you know, services around building landing pages, email sequences, ads to try and help various types of businesses um, convert you know, strangers into customers. So as I grew my agency and we grew the agency, uh, it took us a while to figure out how to get clients and we can dive into that and I can talk to you about that process. But once we actually figured out how to bring in clients consistently, there was always one major problem that I had, which was analytics and tracking and data. And whenever you set up these marketing campaigns and these funnels, right? You, you say, okay, well, I'm going to target people on Facebook and from Facebook, I'm going to send them to a landing page. And once they put in their name and email in that landing page, they're going to get five emails in a row. And then each email is going to send them to various blog posts and whatever, right? You map out all of these campaigns. And then to try and track it, to try and understand how people are flowing through these things is a complete nightmare. You're, you're sitting there and you're looking at Google Analytics, you're looking at spreadsheets, you're looking at charts and graphs and like, <laughs> I'd rather bash my head against the wall than to try and really decipher how all of these numbers and spreadsheets equals this visual path that I'm trying to guide people through. So oh, it used to drive me nuts. Oh, yeah, I know. Did you have, uh, UTM. Oh my God. Google Analytics and UTM. I swear it used to take us longer to set up all of that than it would to actually build the funnel. Dude, honestly. <laughs> and, and then you look at it and you're like, how exactly? Like, wait, so you're telling me this person clicked this UTM, but does that mean they came from this ad or did they come from this email or did they, you know, and like you're sitting there and you're just like, wait, how am I supposed to? understand this, right? So my idea was very simple. Like typically when you map out these funnels, you sit in front of a whiteboard or a piece of paper and you draw these like these steps out, right? You, you with squares and arrows and boxes and you kind of say, okay, well this Facebook ad and then an arrow goes to a, a page when you draw a square and then now they get an email. So you draw a little email icon and you kind of draw it all out to kind of visually see it. So my thought was, wouldn't it be really cool if I could just map out these marketing funnels on a canvas on my computer with a really nice, simple drag and drop page builder or like a canvas. And I could just drag these icons. I can map it all out. But then instead of having to go to Google Analytics to see what's actually happening, I could just hit a switch on that canvas and I hit a little analyze button and then bam, I would be able to see how people are flowing. I'd see the conversion from this page to this page and how many people clicked on this email to go to this page. And I'd be able to right there in front of me on this canvas in the same map that I drew, see how people are flowing through my phones. So that way I could instantly know what's working and what's making me money versus what isn't converting and what I need to fix or optimize or just completely drop. So that was the idea. That was kind of what I started off with as a bare bones idea in that I wrote in a notebook. Um, because my agency was doing very, very well, and we were uh, doing very well in terms of profit, I decided to invest into the development of this tool, uh, or this idea, I should say, there was no name to it, there was it was just an idea. And yeah, we launched it in December of 2017. We launched the free mapping tool. So you can go and use that mapping tool to map out your ideas. It's free. And we launched um, the beta version of our analytics tool two months later. And uh, yeah, here we are now uh, a year later. And it's we've got 75,000 users, uh, a massive community and a lot of people who like love what we've built. So it's, it's pretty cool, pretty exciting. It's insanely cool and uh, I have had a go of Funnelytics and I must say it's, which, you know, what really surprised me. I feel like all the platforms themselves, so if you look at like Facebook or Google or even Google Analytics, um, many of them or ActiveCampaign, you can pick Infusionsoft, they're really, really good at tracking internally, like their own mm -hmm. data. Like I'm actually impressed and blown away with some of the things you can pull out of them these days. But inherently, they all become terrible once you try to get them to cross connect. Like their communication skills, like to get all the data you need into Facebook, near impossible. I'm yeah. the same with Google and the same with this. So I feel like you really struck a chord in the market. 
And um, it's a very, very unique way of coming across it. So I, I just think it's an absolute winner and a no-brainer for anyone, especially those playing with paid ads. I think this is a no-brainer. Yeah, you have to you have to be able to understand the flow of people, right? And this is one of the things that I, I really try to focus on um, as we built Funnelytics. If you want your marketing to work, you're, you have to understand that it's not about the clicks. It's not about conversion rates. It's not about your landing pages or, you know, your EPCs and all of these weird terms, your click through rates and blah, blah, blah. Like none of that really matters. What matters is three core things. And it's fundamental to any marketing, which is people. Who are the people that are coming to you? Right? Like, Understanding these people is the fundamental to anything. So the people who end up purchasing from you, you can find commonalities, you can find trends, you can build profiles of your ideal avatar or that dream customer for your business. So stop thinking about clicks and start thinking about people, right? The second thing is, what are the actions that these people are taking inside of your on your websites, on your pages, what what are the different? Are they click, clicking on this button? Are they watching the video that you put, or are they not? What are the actual actions that they're taking? These various people, and then the third is, it's great to know like these people, and it's great to know the list of all the actions that they've taken in order to uh, in order to get to your checkout page or your your you know lead generation page or whatever. But what you need to really understand is the path that they've taken, right? So people, actions, and paths. What paths are they taking to get to that end goal? Because if you can't map out that path, you have no representation. All you're seeing is a list of different actions that somebody has taken, and you're getting some trends of who they are. So that's great for Facebook targeting, but it doesn't help you map out the flow that you want these people to go through in order for you to optimize your conversions, right? So that's kind of how I look at at analytics, I look at it as people, actions, and paths, as opposed to cost per click and click through rates and EPCs and, and bounce rates. And none of that really matters if you don't know who they are, what actions they take, and the paths that they take to get to that, action, that end goal. That's a really interesting simplification. And I love it when you can make complex things simple. But there definitely is a tendency to get obsessed with things like CTR and conversion rates and EPCs, as you've mentioned from here. But um, often I kind of find that even when you know a lot of that stuff, it, ca- it can often be, um, I suppose, misleading where the metrics you've kind of picked from there is like if you can get clear indications on these things, you have a very good chance of really scaling well. Like that's far more valuable data if you can understand the people the actions and the paths. I think that's mm-hmm. really interesting. Yeah, it's something that I've, um, I don't know, for some reason, as I've been going through this process and, and developing Phonalytics and seeing trends of how our, uh, how our users are using it and the types of people and, uh, that are using it as well as us as we're optimizing Phonalytics and as we're growing Phonalytics and how we're using our own tool, um, it, this seems to be the common trend. It's, it's always back to, who are these people and what is the common profile around your buyers or your customers? And then what actions, what is the common trend and actions that they take? And then what is the common path that they take in order to get to that end goal? And the more you kind of dial in on that, the easier it is to optimize and scale. And I think that's what, I mean, obviously you're biased, you created it on these principles, but, <laughs> yeah, I, um, <laughs> but it doesn't stop it from being good. Sometimes we look at that and I go, what an interesting way to go about um, being a marketing agency. What an interesting way of going, like, if you were to lean on these fundamentals and use something like Funnelytics, um, like how powerful that is for you and your clients in a world where I suppose everyone else is obsessed by different data. So I really like that. I like it a lot. But I want to shift up some different questions here because one of the reasons uh, I wanted to bring you on the show, Mikael, is I feel like you have such a unique view on agency owners. Like you've had an agency yourself and grown quite a substantial agency. You're now providing tools and resources and even training. I know you've made some fantastic training and we even made a course together, which um, I'm very proud of, to be honest. So I wanted to get your opinions and insights on a few key questions here because I think you probably have, I suppose, more insight and unique perspective than most. 
So okay. we'll get into a few of them here. So this is something I'm, I'm really curious about is like, how has the agency landscape changed in your opinion over the last few years? Like how have you seen things evolve here? Hmm. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, I think what I'm seeing a lot, and I think a lot of people have to understand this, is that becoming a digital marketer is starting to become a commodity. It's starting to become, you, you can find so many people who do Facebook ads. You can find so many people, more importantly, you can find a ton of trainings on how to do Facebook ads so that you can sell those Facebook ads to clients and make money doing so. There's so many business opportunities that are being developed from becoming a marketer versus, uh, you know, when I first started learning digital marketing back in 2009, 2010, it was still very much a n newer kind of thing. Like, you know, Google was finally just starting to realize that people were gaming their, their algorithm and trying to rank and stuff like that. Like it, now it's becoming such a business opportunity to become a marketer, which means that as a, an agency owner, you have to do various things to stand out. You have to find a way to put yourself in a category of one. Right, because if all you do is sell Facebook ads, you're selling. You're basically it's a race to the bottom, right? Who has the cheapest Facebook ads? Because put yourself in the shoes of a uh, a client. Put yourself in the shoes of a local gym owner, right? And I'm a local gym owner, and I'm looking for somebody to help me generate leads uh, for you know cycling sessions or something along those lines. Well, if I have a list of five different people. And all of them say, Facebook ads, Facebook ads, Facebook ads. I'm basically assuming that every single one of them is going to get me the same kind of results, right? Because a resume or whatever, your profile is only going to tell me so much. So what is my go-to thought? Well, who's the cheapest? If you're all doing Facebook ads, which one of you is the cheapest? Because I assume you're all going to get me very similar results. So one of the things that you have to understand as a, an agency owner is that it's not about the service that you provide anymore. It's not about doing Facebook ads or doing SEO or doing, uh, you know, Google ads or, or content marketing or social media. It's about the system that you implement to help this particular client achieve the end result that they want. If you can't bridge that gap, nobody wants Facebook ads right? Nobody cares. They just assume that Facebook ads is what's going to help them generate more leads for cycling sessions. But if you can present to them, here's the system that we've implemented for various local gyms in the past. And this particular system, sure, maybe it's comprised of a couple articles, plus some Facebook ads, plus maybe a little bit of, you know, Google Maps uh, type of, you know, local optimization, whatever that system is, that is what you sell to clients. And that's how you put yourself in a category of one. I'm the only person who has this particular system to help you generate uh, people who are going to come in for cycling sessions. I don't just do Facebook ads. So that's, that's one of the key components I've found over the years that um, people have to start shifting around. If you don't want to be looked as uh, a category or if you don't want to be looked as a commodity, and you don't want to, you want to stand out. You want to be able to charge premium prices. You don't want to trade time for, for money and charge just by the hour. You need to systemize your services. You need to package them in a way that speaks to that particular dream client and helps them achieve their end goal. That's one of the biggest things that I've uh, noticed over the years. We didn't even pre-rehearse this, uh, but I feel very aligned to that. It's interesting. Um, in a previous episode of the podcast, this came up as well when I was uh, on the show with a guest, Kim Barrett. Um, mm -hmm. And we have it, he even said that he uh, is currently running an agency and he doesn't even call himself an agency anymore because of the commoditization effect. He yeah. really, really feels that. Um, what's also interesting is that one of my big beliefs is that we're going through this big change in the online space of almost like I'm calling it the era of super niching um, in which the people that I see or the agencies I see succeeding are the ones that pick that 
specific service and segment and result and really go hard after that. So in your example, it might be just working with cycling businesses and just yep. using, as you mentioned, Facebook ads. So I feel very, very aligned to what you said there. And I feel that that is a super important thing for people to be paying attention to. Um, and it's so interesting because it's like, I look back and like we had agencies at similar times and I feel like we almost, I suppose, grew up in the wild west of agency owners <laughs> when it was kind of developing because I feel that, you know, timing plays a big role in things and just that there were so few options to get Facebook ads and Google ads done at that time. It was easy for us to grow quick because of the limited options. The supply and demand ratios were very, very different to where they sit right now. Yeah, definitely. I think, and you're, you're absolutely right about the niching down and understanding that you do not provide services for everybody. And one of the best ways, um, one of the best analogies that I've been able to kind of come up with for this is think about a car manufacturing plant, right? And if you, if you compare your agency to a car manufacturing plant, well, think of the cars themselves as your clients and think of the assembly lines, like the, the conveyor belts to assemble the car as the systems to actually, you know, the systems and processes to get your clients the end result that they want. So the problem that most businesses or most agencies face is they say they do everything for anyone, right? I could do SEO, I could do content marketing, I could do social media, and it doesn't matter if you do e-commerce or if you do, uh, you know, whatever, you're a local, you're a lawyer or you're a local gym or, you know, you sell courses, I can kind of help you in a sense. And here's the issue with this. If you compare that to a car manufacturing plant, right? Well, in a car manufacturing plant, let's say you want to build a sedan, uh, just a regular four-door vehicle. So you have all the parts to that vehicle, right? And you put it on one conveyor belt. And now it goes through this conveyor belt, this assembly line, just automatically. And then there's the various robots and checkpoints and people. And these people and these robots and these checkpoints know exactly what they need to do in order to make this car a sedan. By the end of it, it becomes the sedan and it ends you, it gives you the end result that you wanted. Well, if you were to take a supercar, uh, a sports car, or you were to take a minivan, or you were to take a pickup truck and you were to put all of those pieces on that same conveyor belt, it wouldn't give you the pickup truck because the processes, the systems, the people, the automation, the, the robots, they only know how to build a sedan for that conveyor belt. So unfortunately, you've got to go and build a brand new conveyor belt to help you uh, assembly line or conveyor belt, whatever you want to call it, to help you build now these pickup trucks. And now th another one for the minivan and then another one for the sports car. Your business and your agency is the exact same thing. So if you put a, um, let's say a local gym onto a conveyor belt and you know the exact system that you need to implement in order to get that local gym some results. Well, now you train your team, you put the processes in place, now you get results for that local gym. Well, guess what? If you go and put a lawyer or somebody who sells a course onto that conveyor belt, they're not going to get the same results because you've got to change the system. You've got to, it's not, you're not selling the same thing. You're not helping them the exact same way. There's always going to be nuances and different, maybe it's difference in messaging or targeting for your ads. Maybe you have to set up a webinar for one versus the other one. You only have to set up a landing page. It doesn't really matter. But now the problem you're going to face is you don't have the team, the systems, the processes in order to continue to repeat and get results. So unfortunately, you're now stuck building another conveyor belt and another conveyor belt and another conveyor belt, and you can't grow. You can't actually grow your business. Nothing is systemized. Everything is from your head and you become that bottleneck in your own business. So as a, an agency owner, your first goal should be to say, okay, here's the best way. I, I like to say that agency owners, if you really want to be an agency owner, you're not in the business of servicing clients. You're in the business of building conveyor belts. That's your goal. How, what conveyor belt and what system? And now my goal is to get as many clients to go onto this conveyor belt. And I know that if they go through this process, they're going to get the result that they need, right? You're in the business of building these conveyor belts. So focus on one, 
build one first, choose the niche that you want to build or that you want to go after and make sure that you know the system that is going to help that dream client or that client get results. Build that conveyor belt, fill it up, continue to fill it up. And then if you want to move on and build another conveyor belt, then you can do so. But the minute you start building five conveyor, conveyor belts or 10 at the same, at the same time, it's over. You're, you're going to run into a, a, a situation where you're going to have zero free time. You're going to be bogged down. Clients are going to be hitting you up. Your team is going to be calling you. You're going to try to go on vacation and you're going to end up in fetal position crying on your bed because you have no time for you know, your family. That's, that's the harsh truth of it. Absolutely. Do you know, I was actually going to ask you another question. I've got one written down here, uh, which is what do you think the biggest challenge facing agency owners are? But I think you just nailed it. I think you have yeah. just given such a good analogy. And I really hope people will even re-listen to that path because I agree. I'm a very systems focused person. And I would say the biggest challenge I see uh, agency owners facing or the thing that is holding them back is too many conveyor belts, way yep. too many conveyor belts and um, making it really, really hard to scale and grow because that is spread way too thin, way, way too thin. And I think uh, one of the things people have to ask themselves truthfully is, are you starting your digital marketing agency because you want to be you know, self-employed and, and have a glorified job, but then be seen as the person who knows it all and be, you know, a, an ego driven thing where I came up with the system to help this business. And I came up with the system to help this other business. Is it an ego driven thing? Are you doing it because you want to test your own marketing skills or are you doing it because you want to be a business owner and you want to be able to help as many of these same types of businesses like it doesn't it shouldn't matter how it whether you're helping 10 times uh, a, a local gym or one local gym one lawyer one, you know 10 different types of clients right as long as you're helping these 10 people as a business owner you should be thinking what is the most efficient simplest most you know streamlined way to deliver results for these people and that's how you have to really ask yourself, uh, do you want to do it for ego purposes or are you looking to actually be a leveraged business owner? If you want the leveraged business owner, you don't have a choice. You have to niche down. You have to build one conveyor belt. If you're doing it for your own ego, then guess what? You're just a consultant and maybe you have people helping you, but you'll always be the bottleneck. Definitely. And I'll, I'll never forget a conversation I had with a mentor early on. Um, it's so interesting, the significance piece or the ego piece. Now, I thought at one point in my own business that I was uh, doing things effectively for the money. I thought I was, you know, growing an agency to build wealth and provide for my family and all the rest. But it's really interesting. I never noticed until someone pointed it out, I was actually doing it for significance. I was doing it mm -hmm. for that exact thing where I got my, I was actually getting my kicks from, you know, showing how smart I was, showing that I could build these things. And it was only when that was brought into my awareness of going, hey, well, do you, what, what's the goal here? Do you want to have a successful company or do you want to be seen as a genius? Do you think they're yeah. the same? And they're just not at all. You know, the, the easiest way to know that is when somebody asks you, can you help me? Do you answer by saying, yeah, I can do it. Uh, if you say I can do it, that means that you're basing it off of your own knowledge and strategy. So if somebody comes to you and says, hey, like this is my business. This is the situation I'm in. Um, you know, I really want to grow my leads or I really want to make, uh, you know, sell more of my courses. Uh, you know, this is everything that I've got. Can you help me? If you go and say, yeah, I can come up with a strategy for that, that means that you're doing it for ego. You're doing it to prove to yourself and to the person in front of you that you are the smartest person, that they're hiring you because you're smart. You're basically essentially positioning yourself as a CMO for their business, as opposed to thinking about your processes and your team behind you and saying, yes, this is exactly what we do. Right. Yeah. You fit our mold. 
so we can help you. It's funny what people give away in their language. It really, really does. I always think you can assess uh, how much of a team player someone is, whether they answer it's, you know, uh, uh, as you've kind of referenced, I'll do it or we will do it or the team will do it. Um, Or it's my team if it's ownership of the team instead of the team being its own entity. It's a really good book on that, which is uh, Tribal Leadership by Dave Logan. I'll just reference that for the show notes if anyone wants to learn more about the language in there. Um, but I want to uh, switch gears again, Mikhail, like you've just dropped so much knowledge. I think this has been a really interesting one. Um, but this is something that I'm really keen to get your insight on as well. And I want to make sure makes it into this episode. What trends or things do you see forming at the moment that agency owners should be paying attention to? And I want to give you an example. Um, what I believe at the moment is that YouTube is coming hard. I feel like YouTube is really going to start to shine in 2019 and become a major comparison play against uh, Facebook and other social media platforms. It's going to truly be a social media platform. Do any stand out to you? So when you're asking this question, you're, you're asking from a marketing standpoint, not so much from a, a being an agency, but more so marketing strategies. No, definitely for an agency, but I just feel like YouTube is one for agencies particularly? Yeah, I think there's a few. Um, I think there's a couple things that people have to pay attention to. Uh, number one, you had just mentioned uh, tribal leadership. I think it, no longer can you be an agency or an agency owner and not have an attractive character at the forefront of it. You need to try and create a tribe or a sense of community within your organization, within your business, not just within your your team, but also within your clients. The more you can stand out that way, the more you can... Facebook groups, for example, is a perfect example of how to leverage these community-centric things. I have a... We have an an agency owner inside of uh, our agency accelerator program. Actually, you know him. He's worked with you in the association, Brandon. And the way he he leveraged and launched his agency is by focusing on photographers, first and foremost, and knowing that that's his niche, but then creating a tribe of photographers where all of these photographers are in there to learn and get better at marketing. Now, he's offering his services to help them generate leads for photography, whether you're a wedding photographer or whatever. Uh, He offers his services, but he created this tribe and and his agency is flourishing because of it, right? All of these people are coming into this community and they're seeing this sense of, um, well, community, I guess, right? Where they're not just by themselves. They're in this community with other photography owners. And that creates this incredible dynamic that makes you stand out from everybody else, right? Now, nobody else can compare to you. I think you're 100% right with YouTube. YouTube is going to dominate. I think by the end of 2019, Facebook ads are going to go down a little bit. Um, they're going to be more, they're going to, they're still going to be effective, but they're going to be expensive. Uh, YouTube is going to come up. Google is also going to come back up. Google went down significantly when Facebook started coming up, but I think people are starting to realize that actually there's still so much stuff to do on Google. Like most people ignore Google completely, but as an agency owner, guess what? People are looking for your services. So if you don't have ads set up on Google for, you know, local gym marketing, right? Or whatever your niche is, you're leaving a ton of money and a ton of value on the table. Uh, so I would say those three community based marketing, um, Definitely YouTube, as you mentioned, and then going back to Google, it's kind of revolving back from 2008. Google's coming back up, I find. Uh, And then the last thing, which most people ignore, but it is so powerful, uh, is social media, creating content, like continuously creating content and putting value out there. Um, You look at somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk and uh, who's built a, a massive $100 million agency, even though you may not want that type of level of agency, you it, it kind of goes back to what I mentioned with the attractive character. People want to connect with people. They Because agencies are becoming commoditized, 
as uh, Kim mentioned in your last interview with him, people want to connect with other people. As a local gym owner, I'm getting pitched all the time for various services and agencies are becoming this commodity that I can just pick and choose who I want to work with. But once I see this one person who's out there, who's trying to give value to local gyms and who's clearly interested and wants to help, I'm going to instantly pay attention to that person and want to contact that person versus somebody else. Oh, I love that last one. And I think the best example of that is I wonder how many clients of VaynerMedia uh, work with them because of Gary. I would say probably all. Yeah. <laughs> probably all. I would say like, I would say 90%, if not more. Yeah. So it's absolutely a valid point. I think um, not to be confused with the ego driven part we spoke about before, but the value part and just the power of being the attractive character, they're two very different things and make sure to discern those. But I tend to see um, that's absolutely true is, you know, people want to work with people over brands. And when you can combine the two, a trusted brand with a trusted face or another person, it's a very, very powerful thing. But I just want to to loop back because you just referenced Brandon. um, And what's interesting is he's someone we've both seen succeed really well. Like he's made some really good gains and shout out on this podcast, by the way, um, since I've been in contact with him. And isn't it interesting that he's just followed exactly what we've referenced on this podcast? The one mm-hmm. convey about the, and the tribe focusing on getting a result for one people, being that attractive character, like he's really nailed those things. And I feel like that's definitely been the difference uh, between getting results and not. Yeah, if you don't, uh, if you don't, you're going to be left behind. It's very, it's that simple. Uh, when it comes to... Uh, Look, the, the simplest, easiest way to put it is put yourself in, your, in their shoes. If you're a photographer and you're looking to grow your marketing or you're looking to implement marketing so that you can get more clients and you have this person on the left who says that they do SEO and Facebook ads and then you have this person on the right who says they f- work with photographers to help them generate more clients using a system that they've tested over and over again, who are you going to contact? It's an easy choice, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's that simple. And um, the more you stick to doing generic services, uh, the, the further you're going to get left behind. Yeah, absolutely. So, Mikhail, we have to wrap this one up. It's been a very, very powerful episode and I'll definitely be inviting you to come on again and talk about some other topics with me. There's so many more things we can dive into. But before we end this show, where is the best place to find you online? Yeah, so um, you can go to michaeldia.com where you can find out a little bit more about Phonolytics as well as our agency accelerator program that you are a wonderful coach and uh, mentor in. And uh, those are really the two places. If you want to create your free Phonolytics account for the mapping tool, you just go to phonolytics.io. I'm not a massive social media guy, although I am trying to get better at it. So you can... Uh, probably find me on Instagram and on Facebook and all that stuff as well. We'll make sure to have links in the show notes to check those things out. And guys, if you are interested in learning how to grow an agency and really taking advantage of some of the things Mikhail has referenced in this episode, please go check out the Agency Accelerator Program. I was actually very fortunate enough to be invited to create a couple of modules on system and team and some other bits and pieces as well, which I was uh, very thrilled and excited to share. So check that one up. Oh, sorry, check that one out. Um, Thank you, Mikhail. So much knowledge and wisdom dropped on this call. Thank you so much for being on here. That's it for this episode, guys. 